Hello guys, this is Rupesh and I'm watching CVB Nets video series on STL algorithm series and this video is about copy and copy if function. So, so many people don't know why you will, you will use copy function. I mean, I can understand what is the use of copy if, but <laughs> I don't understand what is the use of copy because I can just simply assign one thing to another thing using assignment operator. So, we'll try to understand all those things in this video. So, let's start this. So the notes says that copy copies the element in the range defined by first and last to another range beginning at some place. Okay. And second point is about copy if only copies if predicate returns true, meaning you can set a condition that uh, I want to copy this array or this vector or this container to another container only if some condition satisfied and you can pass this that condition and it will take it as a predicate. So first of all, I'm creating a vector here, which is a from vector, meaning we'll be using this vector to copy things here and there. Okay. So I'm preparing this from vector. Its size is 10 so that it can hold 10 elements. And I'm using this IOTA function, which will insert from zero to nine inside this vector. So this is what this IOTA does. And I have created a video for this one. If you don't know what is the significance of IOTA function, you can watch that video. Now going forward, see, we have two vectors. So we'll be copying from from vector to two vector one. So one way of using copy function is like this. You create a copy. I mean, you write a copy. You say that from vector begin and from vector end, meaning how much you want to copy to this vector. So this is the syntax. You will give start and end of the source vector and this will be the destination vector. That's pretty simple. And I'm using this print function so that I can just simply print it. So this is printing it. It's some fancy way of doing the same thing. Or alternatively, you can do this. Copy, same, begin and end, but this time you will use this back inserter and if you are using back inserter, you do not have to have the size of your vector initially like you had this one because you had to create this vector along with the size, meaning at least this much size should be there for this vector to actually hold this one. But here, if you don't know how much you are going to copy and you don't know how much you should allocate the memory for this vector to, you can just simply use this way. Cool, right? And then I'm printing that again and see. Now this is what people get confused. Either way is equal to this, meaning either if you're using this way or you're using this way with the back inserter, both the things will do the same thing if you're just simply doing this from vector to two vector, just assign from here to here. So now what is the benefit of copy function if we can do this, correct? Actually, the copy function will look similar if you are using it like this. I mean, begin and end. But the advantage comes when you want to say that from begin plus two, meaning it will start at this place. What you cannot do from here. I mean, with this one. And here also, you can say and minus, let's suppose six or something. Then it will copy that much only from this vector. But here, you don't have that facility. Now it's very easy for you to actually digest that why you will use copy function when you already have this mechanism to assign one thing to another one. Okay, let's move to this copy if and then we'll be done. So this is actually similar like from vector you will say start and end. So this becomes your source now and this is going to be your destination. Now this is the predicate. So you can use a lambda function here. So this lambda function will be called each and every time when you are copying from vector to two vector and if you are returning true meaning it will copy if you are returning false for that number or object for that matter then it will not copy into the destination vector so let's quickly print this and see how it is working hey guys it's time for a quick pause and what you're seeing right now is my patreon page so if you don't know what is patreon it's a crowdfunding website where you can support any content creator like me and in return you get rewards so 
If you join me, I can be your private tutor or you just want to chat with me and ask your doubts or maybe you just want to support me with very small amount and I'll still have something for you. So do visit my Patreon page and see if you like it. And if you want to discontinue anytime, you can do that. So if you have already visited my Patreon page, let's continue our video now. I executed it. See, this first print is printing from 0 to 9. That's what it will do. Second also, I told you that it is similar, so it will do the same job. But third one, see, odd numbers in the vector are meaning I'm copying odd vectors. So if x modulo division 2 is equal to is equal to 1, meaning this is odd number, then only it will become true. But this is really a costly process to do this. <laughs> we can just simply do this and operation with 1 here and you will get the same result let's compile this and execute this see it is still 0 to 9 0 to 9 and 1 3 5 7 9 and this is really very faster way to actually find whether something is odd or even because this will check the last bit and if it is odd it will be 1 and if it is not odd it will be 0 we don't have to check any other bit it's just the last bit so thanks for watching and i know i was not giving videos for almost 50 days because I was so busy and now I have scheduled some separate timing for this. So now we can expect continuous video. So thanks for watching guys. Bye bye. Take care.